Today I'm talking about Del Close, and this is a guy that you've probably not heard of, but he means a lot to me. So uh, he was also considered by many people to be a madman, but an inspired madman. So this is Del Close as a young man, and as a priest, but he wasn't a priest. And this is him as a lot of people knew him, which is kind of a raving lunatic that did a lot of drugs. Uh, these are some of the people that love Del Close. And if you don't know who they are, they're Bill Murray and Amy Poehler and Tina Fey and Stephen Colbert and Carell. And they're all actors and improvisers and comedians and authors and writers and producers and directors. And they were all inspired by Del Close, who taught them improvisation. So Del was born on March 9th, 1934 in Manhattan, Kansas. And Kansas is this mythological place that doesn't really exist, but magic comes out of there, is what I think. Um, poor Tyson. Tyson is amazing. He is magic. I love it. Um, Del Close had an alcoholic dad who never paid attention to him. When he was 17 years old, he Del ran away to a, join a slideshow. He came back to the University of Kansas State U. Then he ran away again at 23 to Wisconsin and joined theater. He did summer stock and improvisation there. Then he went to Missouri and joined the Compass Theater, which was the Compass Players, and they were a cabaret of improvisation and became very, very famous. They also had um, Nichols and May, so Elaine May and Mike Nichols. They became so famous and they went over to Manhattan, New York. This is the 19, late 1940s, early 1950s, when all the beatniks and the poets and were hanging out in Greenwich, Greenwich Village, like Gregory Corso and Ginsburg and Kerouac, and all the Congo drums were happening and a lot of drugs, which he definitely did. Um, in 1960, he went to Chicago and uh, joined up with the Second City, which is again improvisation and sketch. And it's a school and a theater, and he taught there, and he did a lot of drugs, and he got fired because he did so many drugs. In a time when everyone was doing drugs, he got fired because he was doing too much. Uh, so when he got fired, he went to Improv Olympic. He met a woman named Sharna Halpern, and together they made this theater company and this school, which still exists and is now called I.O. They also wrote a book called Truth and Comedy because that's the underlying thing that Dell always said was most important, was to be honest, to be truthful in your art, because improvisation was an art, and in your life. Um, and in order to get that, he would berate his students and yell at them, and if they saw a dishonest moment, he would just <laughs> scream at them. He was doing a lot of drugs. Um, and, but what they said was that it really beat out the habit of dishonesty in their performance and their work. So all of these people were students and loved him and said, um, you know, their takeaway was just that improvisation was something that worked into their life as well, which is also a big part of why I liked it. And um, this is just a little clip of Tina Fey talking about her take I on improvisation. Think studying improvisation in general for a lot for a lot of the people that you'll talk to here made sense to them as an art form and in their life. The whole concept of, of yes and, of agreeing and adding on, of a positive outlook to life, of making statements as opposed to asking questions, just being, you know, just being bold in your life and being uh, fearless whenever you can be. Um, I think all, all these people have applied that, know, knowingly or not, have applied that to their actual life. Okay, that sound didn't work for the speaker. <laughs> but what she was talking about basically was that you're, he taught you how to be fearless and how to be honest and how to say yes to things and incorporate that in your life so you don't block yourself. Um, which is just something that I love and really took as far as his influence on improvisation and on acting and in life. So the th three things that I'll talk about, because there are tons, are listen, yes and, slash yes because, and follow the fear. So when you're listening, you can get everything that you need, all the information, if you really pay attention to the other person. And this is not just listening with your ears, but your whole body, um, the things that you see, the things that you hear, the things that you feel around you in your environment, listening with your emotions. Like, what is that person trying to communicate that they don't want to say? And you can just pick up on so many of those things. Uh, listening is also giving yourself the opportunity to be changed by what the other person is giving you. So not just saying, okay, I hear you, whatever, see ya, you know, but 
you have the opportunity to let it affect yourself. What's important too is that you don't have to do something just because someone says, oh, I think you should do this. You have the choice to say, nah, not gonna do that. But you also are opening yourself up to saying, yeah, you are affecting me. And because of that, I will change something about myself. Um, the second one was yes and, or yes because. And this is big if you're in improvisation and hearing about Everyone's gonna say, oh, the number one rule is yes and, so you don't stop the action immediately. Um, so if we have something like, uh, yes and will also give you your perspective. So if you add on to it, then you're saying, oh, here's what I wanna contribute to as well. So if someone says, hey, I built this nice fire, let's enjoy it, and then they say no, then you're done. If you say, hey, I built this nice fire, let's enjoy it, and they say, that's not a fire, that's a cabbage or whatever then it's stupid and you're done. Um, but if they say something like, hey, I built this nice fire, let's enjoy it, and they go, yes, then you can enjoy a nice fire together. It's also stopped because they didn't say anything else, so you have to add on and give something else. So this person might say something like, hey, I built this nice fire, let's enjoy it. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it if we jump in the fire. And then by yes and, you say yes, and then we will die, and <laughs> that's just something that happens. So again, you stop the action. Um, but Del was saying, again, he went to the truth. So in a real situation, if someone said to you, hey, let's enjoy it by jumping in the fire, and then you go, yes, and we won't die because we're gonna turn into horses, and then they go, yes, and we'll grow wings, and we will fly around and solve crimes and fall in love and stuff like that. Then you have a scene about two horses who are flying around the world. And they can be fun and exciting and crazy, but after you do that like three times or 500 times, however many times you see it, you can't connect. So if something happens like, hey, um, let's enjoy this nice fire that I built. Yes, and let's jump in it. Your real reaction would be like, no, what's up with you? And you question, why are they doing that? What's the because? Did you not bring back my Game of Thrones DVDs? Like, <laughs> what's going on, you know? And then they can say, they respond with that, with something like, no, I didn't, because I actually want you to come to my house and pick it up. Now that answer like, opens up this world of like, why do you want me to come to your house, you know? Do you want to kill me? You want whatever me? It's like, you bring in the emotion and the reality of something that could actually happen in life. Which is, makes people very vulnerable. And this is my favorite, follow the fear. When you bring in your emotions, you can become very, very scared because it's important to you. And that's the most valuable one that I feel. If you can recognize when fear comes up, not saying that you're just shutting it off and saying, I'm not going to be afraid, but saying, that's important enough to me that I'm afraid. And following that through all the way to see where it, come, where it comes out. The reward at the end is just so valuable. So, an example of this is if you had a secret in your life that you let weigh you down and you just didn't tell anyone, like the people that meant the most to you, because you're afraid of how they're going to react. You're afraid that they'll reject you or they'll think that you're just off and strange. It's really scary to reveal yourself like that. But if you do, then you can be honest with yourself and those people and get whatever reaction that is, whether it's positive or negative, you know where you stand and you can be true to who you are. Um, another one is if you, know, you wanna know if somebody loves you or not, it's scary as fuck to put yourself out there and like, try to find out, does that person love you? But at the end, you get to know and you could be the happiest in your life or miserable and sad. And I still think it's funny, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> But you know where you stand, and you can really live your life authentically and truly as far as the honesty of who you are. So this is a quote from Joseph, Ca Joseph Campbell. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. It's taken from Improvisation at the Speed of Life, which is a book by TJ and Dave, who are two improvisers who are still performing now, who were students of Dell, and followed a lot of what he was talking about. So in that, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. 
It's so scary, but the rewards that are possible on the other side are just immeasurable as far as you're, if you can build the courage to go in there and follow that fear to whatever end it reaches. So Dell died on March 4th, 1999, and he basically was telling people, and tell them all that we succeeded where others have failed. We created theater of the heart, a theater where people cherish each other to succeed on stage. Tell the students theater of the heart, which is something that I look for in performance, in people, in relationships. Um, there's just so much more at stake than, than just the, I mean, the intelligence of it is brilliant, and I love it. But the connections that he made, um, I think just added so much to what the art was and to how you incorporate that art into your life. And that's Dell. That's it. Questions? Oh, Anybody got questions? So you do it about, right? I did it for a long time. I haven't done it in about a year and a half, but I, I used to do that for about six years. How long have you been at Papa? I have been at Thoughtpa for about a year and a half. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. I don't know why I just went back. But the busyness of Thoughtpa is something that I also love. But it does, yeah, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. Uh, any recommendations on where to go for it? Absolutely. So I'm going to Chicago. <laughs> um, I'm going to Chicago when I go on my, my PTO specifically for one day so I can see TJ and Dave. Um, they do an amazing show here in New York at the Barrow Street Theater, which is in the village where all the beatniks used to be. And it's a two-person show, and it just plays out how life plays out. Everything is real time. and. It's so great because although I love jokes, it's not just joke based. It's not where the goal is just the joke and then you move on. It's about creating that relationship with each other and then seeing these lives unfolding together. Um, it's, I recommend it so much if you, if you haven't ever seen it. Bow Street Theater in New York. The reason why I'm going is because they're not coming back for the summer and they'll be coming back later, but not this summer. So I was like, I need a fix. And, uh, I gotta go to Chicago, so I'm going to Chicago. Yeah, there are some other theaters as well, um, which are more, uh, which are more game based, and it's about finding the funny thing immediately, and that's also interesting. But for myself, again, it's like the flying unicorns and stuff like that. Cool, it's wild and crazy, and I want to see something else too. Yeah, what's up? So, uh, I was gonna call yesterday with. Uh, Mm -hmm. CTO of uh, where Rosen came from. Yeah. And he told me that he's teaching improv there at their school. It's like a, a Metis type school, but for six months, and that they're doing improv like five hours a day or something. Some very large Who? amount. This As part of the rest of people who were in the oh. Rosen's program. So these are uh, Antella employees, which is also kind of like a school. So it's um, really specifically just for improvisation? So just for improvisation awesome. because he wants to. Uh -huh. And it got to the point, it was really interesting being on a call where, you know, I, I said something, and you know, I said, where are you? I said, oh, I'm in the bridal suite. And then his wife was there, and she started it and yeah. they just, they, they, they take it to the point where they're just doing it in life just for fun. Oh, that's fun, yeah. <laughs> when Harry was here, he was a great improviser. I mean, he was he like, Amazing, and uh, George too. I mean, George started one day talking to me about rabbits because of Task Rabbit, and then we kind of just went somewhere else with it. <laughs> oh, George, come on, follow it. You don't have to. It was, it got interesting, right? So there were like rabbits being hitched to a sled because George didn't know what Task Rabbit was. So rabbits being hitched to a sled, pulling it around, and then it, yeah, to get dark. <laughs> And have you, you know, I've taken improv classes professionally. Like, what's your, yeah. do you feel that improv can, as something, top of this as well? 
Absolutely, yes. So when we do our design sprints and everything, it's, it's so aligned with what our process is and we're putting up all the post-it notes and just generating ideas. That's the yes and, because it's so easy to be a person and it's a defense me mechanism as well, where you're just saying, mm, no, and it's a weird type of power play sometimes. So if you're just generating those ideas, the yes and, how about this, yes, this, yes, this, yes, this, and you put it all out there, you can really see the whole spectrum of what could be offered. Um, I think that when we start to distill things, that's the because. So the because is so important because you bring in the reality. So instead of finding just the horses that fly away and catch on fire, which is great, um, then you can see really what is this, pro this product supposed to do? Are we getting to there? Is this important? Yes, because it lines with this. Is it important? Yes, because it's lining with this. Is it important? Yes. Because it's fun? Okay, sure, that gets in there too. All these little bits and pieces. And then you can actually say no because you're, you're responding and accepting the reality of what's happening. Instead of just everything's out, now everything goes in. You can, you can choose. Um, again, you're listening and you can choose the things that you put through. Um, but the yes and is so important because especially in business, I think that a lot of people have to try to fend for themselves and you have a, a block up because you need to be very, very strong. And I think that if they can see that being vulnerable and accepting other ideas is another type of that strength, then you, it, would just, it would be so helpful because you allow change to occur and with change, better things often will come. Anything else? Only that I really like snippet of where people cherish each other to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. That was something um, I thought I was going to be going on too long, but so I'll, I will talk about it. It's something I took out. Another thing that he talked about was um, making the other person look good. So it's not always, if you need answers, then what's going to be the best thing to make that other person really stand out, to make their ideas shine? You know, you get a lot of credit for supporting and assisting and working together to make something beautiful and wonderful. Instead of trying to <clears throat> cut people down and it's just, it's, it's really such a defense mechanism because you want, you, you know, a lot of times it's like, I need to step on somebody or something in order to be high. You could bring up everyone with you and everyone could come together and how much stronger is that? If everyone as a whole team is just like all rising up, it's, it's impressive. It's, it's great. And if you can focus on that and making the other person the star, they'll do the same with you. And then it also lets you be less afraid to give your ideas because you know that they will support that. Even if they're going to say no sometimes, they heard you and they accepted what you were saying. I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs>